Amen. Will you join me in prayer? Spirit of life, big love, gracious God of many names and no name. You who are the source of the magic of our days. You are in the bread and the one who makes the bread. You are in the earth that grows it and the mouths that await it. We pray for those experiencing devastation in our city, in our country, in the world, and those close at hand. The list of sorrows grows long. But the candles and the other sorts of flame for those sorrows grow too. And we pray to be always among those who remember instead of among those who forget. We pray for those who have lost loved ones. We pray especially for those who have been killed by police. Those who are fighting illness and those who feel isolated. We do not give thanks for our sorrows but we do give thanks for the love and the longing and the lessons, knowing that joy and woe are woven fine. May we be blessed. May we be loved. May we be free. We ask these things for ourselves, for those we love and for those we do not love. Amen. comes to us from Mary Oliver. Don't hesitate. If you are suddenly and unexpectedly feel joy, don't hesitate. Give in to it. There are plenty of lives and whole towns destroyed or about to be. We are not wise and not very often kind and much can never be redeemed. Still, life has some possibility left. Perhaps this is its way of fighting back, that sometime something happened better than all the riches or power in the world. It could be anything, but very likely you notice it in the instance when love begins. Anyway, that's often the case. Anyway, whatever it is, don't be afraid of its plenty. Joy is not made to be a crumb.
We are not wise and not very often kind and much can never be redeemed. Still, life has some possibility left, says the poet. I would file that under bleak encouragement. And there are times in my life, and I don't know about you, where the only kind of encouragement I can actually stand is the bleak kind. I have a very depressing friend from seminary who's, who has been known to say, you know, technically, there is always hope. And there are some times when that is just about the amount of optimism that I can muster. When the bleak encouragement is the only kind of moving forward that feels honest or real. The theologians and the philosophers, when attempting to describe the mystery, when attempting to put language to the ineffable, talk about the via negativa. How do you know what joy is? Well, I can tell you a whole bunch of things that it is not. We are not talking about giving in entirely to the temptation to absent yourself from the struggles of the world. The temptation to be pulled away from news that is difficult. The temptation to distract yourself from the sorrows in your own life and the sorrows around you. Joy is not an anesthetic. It is not a numbing agent. We don't turn away and seek fulfillment elsewhere and call that joy. It is true that for short-term survival and sanity, sometimes we do need to take a pause and take a rest from the screens, from the bad news, from talking about coronavirus. But to distract ourselves with activities is not quite the same thing as joy. The poet is also not talking about being satisfied with crumbs. Joy was not made to be a crumb. Think about this a lot as it relates to the, the public's relationship to elected officials. I cannot tell you how many people have said to me about someone or other who's made a decision I don't agree with. Yeah, but you should have seen the other guy. As if being less bad uh, then someone who came before you is something to be commended. We are conditioned to accept crumbs from people in positions of power, sometimes from our families, from our loved ones. We are encouraged to pursue contentment or um, in a cheapening of gratitude to be grateful that it isn't worse. And this is not the same thing as joy either. The hymns and the Psalms, and even the self-help podcasts talk about joy as an antidote to all sorts of other things in living. And 
there is a uh, there's often a, a command and an exhortation to rejoice. You know how many hymns begin with the word rejoice, especially around Christmas. This um, sort of no matter what you're doing, drop and prepare yourself to be filled. This part is maybe the part that's interesting. Joy is something that happens to us. You can seek it, you can prepare for it, you can prioritize it, you can even chase it, but you can't feel it on command and you can't manufacture it. It is something that arises in us, something that happens to us. Some would describe it as a movement of the spirit that inhabits us, sometimes when we think it will, and other times when we just least expect it. To cultivate a spiritual life where we live prepared for joy, when we know it, when we see it, when we recognize it, when we know what it is, I think strengthens us against distraction and complacency. Joy is holy. It strengthens you. It does not supplant your sorrow. It does not, like we talked about a few weeks ago, sit on the other side of the scale, trying to outweigh your worries and your grief. We are not counting beans in our spiritual lives. Do not rejoice in order to skip over your weeping. Be wary of any instruction to rejoice in order to skirt around your sorrow or the expressions of sorrow and rage by people who have been oppressed and marginalized. The exhortation to rejoice instead of to try to change the world is poisonous. The thing about joy as something that happens to you is that you can be assured it is there for you. It awaits you. Because the worst thing hurts, but the worst thing is not the last thing. So maybe right now you're in the worst thing. You don't need to skip over it. Joy awaits you and the practice of rejoicing is available to you when you are able to pick it up. And so you can turn your attention when you are ready to the miracle of living, the glory in the world that beckons to you, that surprises you, that awaits you. And you can do this because the gift of life, unearned and freely given, precious and singular, is meant to be enjoyed. It is an invitation for you to take up, to inhabit, to know and to name. And when you are ready to let it fill you and strengthen you, may it be so for you and so for us all. Amen.